beautiful souls welcome to cosmo muse tarot and my friday insight reading which in the past has been yes no maybe readings but i think i slowly kind of been working towards shifting that and breaking up with it and it's felt right too um you know even though like I, they don't feel like negative to do them but when I give yes no readings they sometimes like I get nervous that people will take them more black and white than they should be um, but I myself will go to other people's yes no readings and get a lot of beautiful insight from them so it's not that I don't like them but there's just something that I don't know, the last year hasn't been resonating with me with doing them completely. Like I have waves of like feeling excited to do them and then waves of feeling a little bit, I don't know, disharmonious with them. And so the last couple of weeks I've played with doing just sort of like insight into questions and it's felt right it's felt like the right move to move away from the yes no at least for now um but even doing those insight into questions i just i don't know i think that there's something in me that just wants to try a different kind of insight reading on my fridays so i'm moving towards mystery messages for your fridays they're still like my friday reading is always meant to be a little more quick something that's like five to ten minutes um you know and the yes no was a fun thing to do in that and i did really enjoy them but yeah i'm just feeling called to something different so mystery messages is sort of the series i'm going to be doing for a little while see how those go how that starts to resonate and um but mystery messages from different things each week and this week i'm going to do a mystery message from your dna i feel like our dna our genetics are actually like a really really mysterious thing and something that we still have a lot to understand and i think it holds a lot about human potential that we haven't tapped fully yet um, in our understanding of what we're capable of and so this mystery message is meant to kind of like tap into something your DNA wants to talk to you about um, in terms of potential it holds that you are not that not just that you're not tapping into but something that if it, it's feeling like you're close to, like you could tap into something. Um, it's like wanting to talk to you about something you're close to tapping into, some potential you haven't quite reached but are like scratching <clears throat> just the, above the surface of. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what will come through from that in talking to DNA. I haven't done a reading like that before. So it's a little bit of a mystery to me, but also a mystery message for you guys to see how, what your DNA wants to say and like how DNA talks through me and the cards, we'll see. So anyway, three piles to choose from today. Pile one, we have kind of like a more raw, uncut, clear crystal quartz. Pile two, we have a red jasper. Pile three is opalite. So tap into these three stones, feel into which ones are, one or ones are calling you in. You could listen to multiple if you feel called to. And when you're ready, timestamps are in descriptions and I will see you in your readings. Hello, pile one, welcome to your Friday mystery message. And this week's mystery message is from your DNA. Um, after I did the intro, I had this immediate sort of general download about each pile. And for yours, sort of in terms of like the category of like, at what level is that untapped potential talking about? 
And for you, it's like untapped potential in your DNA that like is pioneering, like not just that you in particular haven't tapped into this in your DNA, but something that's more like cutting edge that like human evolution or at least current humanity um, is like right on, on the cusp of tapping into so I don't know yeah that feels like a I don't know kind of a weird responsibility to have to try and read for because I'm not a scientist so we'll see how this works so let's get into it we're gonna do a resonance a sacred geometry resonance card an animal card and some tarot cards uh, to get into this so this is the one wanting to come through, Divine Feminine. Oh, well, I love that. Okay, let's see what the little message says here. It says, the frequency of Divine Feminine supports our soft, receptive, and nurturing side, facilitating our intuition and intrinsic understanding of our connection to the cosmos. Oh, wow. I love this and I'm going to share, it may feel abstract and there will be a little bit more about this um, in the new year because I'm making a new um, website for my astrology, which I've kind of over the last maybe 10 years of practicing astrology really developed a very um, individualistic, instinctive, unique framework for understanding astrology. And there's certain like larger cycles of time that we go through. And one of those is is like a 15 year cycle that's pushing like a longer cycle forward. You don't have to understand that. Um, <laughs> But in 2025, at the new year, we will enter a new 15-year cycle, and it really will be highlighting the divine feminine. So you're definitely, like, if you're coming to this pile, I think this next 15 years coming up is one where whatever comes through today might really um, be profound for you in your own development, but things that maybe you start to understand could be profound for the world as well in terms of what feminine energy is, how it's supposed to be used, and the way it's supposed to be respected. Because I feel like we get it so, so wrong all the time. Um, so, there could be some messages coming through here in terms of like the same facilitating our intuition and intrinsic understanding of our connection to the cosmos. I'm feeling like, you know, that, that feminine energy really to me, one of its, you know, there's a lot to the divine feminine and I'm sure a lot beyond my own understanding but the night to me is very feminine the dark but like when the earth turns towards the sun during the day that feels very yang and when it turns towards space at night when we see the stars that feels very yin so something about understanding the cosmos and space beyond us is actually quite feminine and we've been trying to understand it in a really masculine way through science which i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that i think that's great you kind of need both to have holistic understandings of things um but i think we've maybe reached a certain level of scientific and like logical understanding of like the structure and the purpose and you know all sorts of things about the universe and the cosmos but I think this coming cycle is going to shift us into bringing some balance 
to that through tapping into more of the intuitive, using a little more imagination around understanding things a little bit more um, open to some co-creative energy even in understanding things. So I feel like your DNA is popping up to say that like this is going to be very important for you, um, that it's really ready to reveal some things about the nature of the cosmos through your own like intuitive and imaginative sense of things. I hope that makes sense. But I think there's some things that will unlock in understanding in you in that coming cycle. So I know this is a little ways away, but it feel it, I don't know, I do I just like immediately felt that thread to that you know, phase coming starting 2025. So I know we've got some, you know, six or so months. Um, well, depending on when you come to this, you might come to this already in 2025. Um, but I do feel that thread of time there. And I think it's sort of like maybe preparing you to open your mind, to open up to using your intuition for more serious things, not, not in place of science, right? I'm not trying to say, and I don't feel your DNA saying this either, of like saying like what's been proven about science and the use of the scientific method. There, it's not trying to invalidate any of that or say it's not right. I think it's like, and I don't understand, this is what I don't understand and I can't see it's beyond me, is like there's some other system or method that's more feminine, that's less um, like evidence-based that might match the evidence-based, like it's not getting rid of it or detracting from it or trying to disprove it or take it over, but something that's balancing it that like I feel this pile's DNA eager and ready to get to work on. Um, and I don't know that work is even the right word, right, with feminine, not saying feminine doesn't work, but like allow to have, I don't know, because this is beyond me, I don't know that I'm using the right words. Um, but yeah, there's something more imaginative and intuitive in terms of like under, like matching science, um, counterbalancing it, but not overtaking it, not only using imagination, right? That that becomes too malleable and unstable, but there's something that's become rigid. So there's like a balancing that's wanting to happen. Um, a feminine balancing something with the sciences, I don't know. And in your own, you know, personal life, this may be calling from your DNA to use a little bit more intuition in life versus looking for evidence, looking for external validation, like something coming more from inside that might be hard to trust because it's not... Um, traditional or not proven in a, I don't know what that would be because there's so many ways like in our personal life that we do use intuition. So I'm not sure what this is getting at because that's not new, but it's like in, pl not in place of, but it's like maybe something that you would do in your normal life that is very much so connected to using um, 
evidence-based things to know things or to activate things or to trust things and there's something else like your DNA is asking you to trust something else and I wish I could say what this is I don't know what I think that might be personal to each of you or like a little different for each of you you know so it's hard to like pinpoint what that is I know that's mysterious um I, you know, like it even could be like how you're communicating with people in your, like maybe that's starting out with like how you communicate with people in your household rather than, <clears throat> using words or, you know, like a close friend or family member instead of like texting or calling, maybe there's more intuitive communication that's wanting to be developed i don't know i mean i'm walking in territory i i don't really know but i'm just trying to think of examples of what this could be that you might that might be like very normalized in everyone's life but that's like on the surface of like changing or something else coming in right so communication could be one thing. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why. Um, trusting your intuition around more concrete things too that you might feel silly for speaking up about certain experiences or knowings that come in that aren't traditionally uh, sought through intuition or that you know sciences might find phony or silly if you were to use intuition around certain things I don't know sorry I'm like this is, yeah, I mean, this is below the surface. So even for me, I'm just like, I don't, I can't quite touch it, but there is something coming. Um, and it's like, you're, you know, like, I think universally it's coming, but like whoever came to this pile, it's like, you're going to be on the forefront of it, or you're being asked to really be courageous in this and if you came here it's like your dna is resonating with this threshold right of like willing to be someone that that would step up into working with more intuitive sense of understanding our world yeah, I don't know. I hope that makes sense. See, this reading was supposed to be like a maximum 10 minutes and like I'm fumbling my way around for 14 minutes on one card <laughs> because I don't know because that was the initial message just from your stone that I got that this is something that, you know, it's not just about you. It's like, um, this is something humanity is on the cusp of, like really getting into this divine feminine in a new way. Okay, and then we have the golden egg. That adds something about like really trusting your heart too. And there's this thing with the heart and the heart chakra to like really be able to, to let your heart be the thing that takes the lead in your life and have like give you a certain courage and a certain strength um, is you have to be practiced at getting quiet to listen there's like a voice that needs absolute stillness and quiet to get to to listen to so I feel like this card is coming through to say like your heart is important in unlocking this like new layer of feminine power um, 
And so you need to start practicing already that listening, um, getting in touch with knowing your heart. There's something very important about that and how this comes through. Yeah, okay. Um, what did I say? There was the word power came out somewhere and that's, I don't even remember what I was saying, but that is sticking in my throat. And it's like maybe the way feminine energy is empowered will be different too. I, I feel like a lot of that, um, you know, feminism in these days is sort of like asking for equal respect, but in, in still doing things the masculine way, like women can be men, right? Kind of thing. Like we deserve equal respect and equal pay and equal whatever, but for doing things in the masculine world, in the masculine way, instead of trying to, and I'm not saying everyone does that, but there does seem to be this vein of that. And I think that's one great thing, like, like the, the feminine should be able to or every person, I don't really want to genderize this, um, but every person should, you know, we all have a yin and a yang side and every person should have respect and equal capacity to play in the yang realm. And I feel like we've worked really hard at that and that's a positive thing. I'm not trying to say that's negative, but I sometimes feel like feminism is asking for women to be treated or those that identify as women to be treated the same in the masculine framework instead of trying to claim power in the feminine framework and asking for respect and recognition in the feminine framework and in doing things in the feminine way and there when i said power something felt big about that like shifting to better seeing and owning and empowering the feminine energy, not females in a masculine framework, but actually any gender and any gender in the feminine framework, like a softening, uh, a more empathetic, frequency being respected something like that and how can you use your heart to know how to help in that mission okay let's get you a tarot card to end because we're way over what i thought we would do but i mean it's fascinating what's coming through okay and two of cups yeah and it, ultimately it's harmonizing the energies it's not taking away from the yang it's bringing a counterbalance it's it's better balancing the energies for things to be more harmonious for things to be more compatible for things to be more um mature and abundant and what's interesting about the two of cups is this card rules the first 10 degrees or the first decan of cancer energy and astrology and that's sort of what i was talking about near the start of this reading where we're coming into a new 15 year cycle that's very feminine in nature but i was talking about the zodiac sign of cancer we're coming into a 15 year cycle of cancer energy um, and this is the first fifth, uh, 10 degrees of cancer energy right here. So that feels like confirmation. But yeah, there it feels like there's some kind of counterbalance about to start happening in our DNA 
waking up in new ways on the feminine side of things. And you resonating with this pile, being asked to be a pioneer in that, to <clears throat> bring forth from the heart what it means to see and respect things like empathy, things like nourishment. Yeah. Okay, so that is your message. Sorry, it was double the amount of time than I expected. But yeah, it was very mysterious, for sure. That came true. Um, so anyway, if this resonates, I always appreciate um, support, likes, shares, subscribes. Always grateful for kind and thoughtful comments, too. So yeah, good luck with this kind of DNA communication, something that you are on the cusp of, but also I feel humanity on some level on the cusp of. But, you know, sometimes it takes the mass of humanity 10 years to wake up to something, and I feel like you're waking up immediately to this. So your, your particular DNA is like primed and ready to go with this. So yeah, be a leader for us in this. All right. Have a beautiful day wherever you are, and I will see you in future readings. Hello, beautiful souls, pile two. Welcome to your Friday Insight, and this week's is a mystery reading from your DNA. Pile one was so fascinating, um, so we'll see what happens with you guys, but I, like I said in pile one, I had an immediate download right after I did the intro, as I was kind of feeling into each of the stones from the piles. And for you guys, it was kind of like these very, very broad categorical messages that came through about each of the stones in relation to a DNA message. It was like, this is something, your message is something where it's like um, the mystery message from your DNA has to do with something that you are close to accessing that is really powerful in your DNA, but that your ancestral line, somewhere in your lineage, it's already been polished and refined, like this thing in your DNA is something that's buried deep, something that's been developed over a long time. Um, but for whatever reason for you, you're just about coming into it. You haven't quite come into this for some reason, and I don't know if it's like what age you are, maybe you haven't been the right age to like fully step into or claim certain, you know, things in your DNA or had certain experiences that unlocked it in life. Um, but whatever the reason, timing is indicating like you are very like right scratching the surface of something that's already been honed in sort of your ancestral lineage um, that you're you're waking up to or about to wake up to and this mess you know mystery message from your DNA wants to kind of like help you along with that so we're gonna get these geometric resonance cards and get a main sort of theme of what that's about what this has to do with kindness okay and I'm sure it's not saying that you've never been kind right um, there's something deeper but let's see what the general message here says the energy of kindness reminds us to be considerate and wise in our interactions with others and ourselves and to find the root of our love through our connection to source and I feel like that last sentence is the important one here um, or not sentence but the last sort of phrasing to find the root of our love through our connection to source so there's something about your kindness and connecting to the root of love that is the foundation for kindness through your relationship to source 
So not just coming into kindness because you were taught to be kind from your family or learned as a child that kindness is something that affords you friendship or belonging. You know, there's a lot of different ways we understand reasons to be kind to others. Um, but it's like you're scratching into this new layer of like, something that's helped you to recognize a deeper level of like what's at the root of kindness though um what is kindness actually about beyond just me just beyond just um be, being accepted or liked there's something beyond that and i think you're having experiences right now that are helping you to get like a layer deeper into this and how at the root of kindness is a love that is sourced from source, from having a relationship with source. So let me see if I can re-engineer that or go backwards from how I said it. So having a relationship with source is ultimately about like understanding love. And then if you can really feel that, you know, that's kind of like unity consciousness, right? When you have this relationship with source, there's a unity consciousness there that ultimately is loving. And so when you can center in that, it's easier to be kind in life despite people's behaviors, despite circumstance, despite whether you're going to, you know, being kind will make people like you or not. It's not about that. It's about something deeper, right? And so I think there's like maybe some experiences you're going through or, you know, I mean, like the reason why this message would be coming now is like you're scratching the surface of this. And so I do like that is where I'm sourcing that like I feel like maybe you're going through some experiences right now where maybe you're te being tested around your sense of kindness in life. Um, you know, maybe there's some things that have happened that have been very unfair or very traumatic or very um, disorienting, whatever it is, or confusing. Um, and sometimes in those or frustrating and, you know, there's so many things that can come up where it's really difficult to tap into kindness. And sometimes we can feel like it's not even, you know, like that's not my kindness isn't deserved. And, you know, we're all human. I'm not trying to say that, like, I'm above this, but like that is coming from a shallower understanding of kindness. I certainly myself can come from that shallow understanding of kindness, right? Um, but there's something deeper happening in your life that's tapping you, like you're scratching the surface of the, like there's something deeper about kindness. It's not about you. It's about source. It's about a certain consciousness. Um, it's about holding a certain vibration. And one thing I would add into this in like um, traditional Chinese medicine, or at least the way it's interpreted in like Qigong, is kindness is a spring energy connected to wood and growth. And kindness helps growth. Like um, when anger, so I don't know if it's quite an opposite energy, but like when you know anger is another emotion associated with that wood and spring that can come up and that comes up you know through that theory when our growth is obstructed and kindness is what you can tap into to overcome obstructions to allow the path to growth so it's like also maybe another way to look at kindness is like when it's hard to find kindness maybe like stepping back and being like, how is that obstructing my growth and feeding some anger at the same time that's creating a negative feedback loop? I mean, I could definitely take that advice sometimes in my life. I'm not trying to preach. I'm not great at this sometimes. Um, 
but yeah, just kind of channeling some things coming through here. Okay, let's get an animal message about this as well. Oh, beautiful nightingale. It feels like this is saying like it wants, like your DNA wants to push you a little bit right now. Like sometimes to integrate and really not even is like not even at the stage of integrating to like, you know, when you can feel you're at the surface of something, like scratching the surface of something, but you, you know, there's just like this little kick extra that you're not quite, it's like you're grasping it, but you're grasping it missed. It's like you can sense it, you know, there's some material there to hold on to, but it's kind of hard to grasp because it hasn't fully materialized. It's still kind of congealing. It's still mist-like. And so you're like, ugh. And I feel like this is your DNA speaking up to say, like, to really kick this into gear and to really materialize this understanding of kindness. It's urging you to practice putting your kindness into action, speaking your kindness into the world, even when you feel you'd rather get angry or um, say something negative or come from a mean place or an angry place or um, come from a self-serving place. It's like practice activating, actively using kindness in your life and you will push through that grasping onto mist into like this materializing, this understanding, this deeper understanding of kindness coming through. And because there's something deep about this in your ancestral ties, there may be a specific family member. It doesn't mean that every person in your family would own this trait. This could be something that skips generations or multiple generations or something, but it has come through a long line of refining this understanding of kindness. So if there is somebody in your family you can think of that, that portrays kindness in a way that you've always admired, you may also look to them for some guidance right now be, as you're like really on the cusp of something here. And like, I do feel the universe might be pushing you, challenging you around <laughs> your sense of kindness. So yeah, is there a family member that like you might look to as a model at the moment or stories of a great grandparent or great uncle or aunt or, you know, some... Some, you know, like for a lot of you, this may be a living relative, even if it's like an aunt or a cousin, um, might even be closer, like a sibling or a parent. But for others, this could be, I feel like this wouldn't be coming up as an ancestral one if there wasn't some kind of model it was helping you to see. So even if that story is about someone that you never met that's past, like, Whatever it is you can like tap into, there is a model for you in your lineage of what your DNA is trying to help you get right now. Okay, to end, let's just get one tarot card as well. Ace of Cups. This feels to me like your DNA trying to communicate what it will feel like when this does like really sink in, when you really grasp a hold of this. It's like a whole new level of being able to center yourself in love. And that being able to center yourself in love, giving you this like overflowing sense of emotional abundance in life an overflowing sense of compassion and love and so centered and powerful in that um so it's like you're 
that's what's below that surface you're scratching right now. It's like this whole new wealth of love power, love resource, yeah, um, love wealth. Okay, that is where I'm going to leave you guys. Very, very beautiful, interesting message. Um, definitely one that I definitely had to clarify this wasn't like coming from teachings I have integrated myself. Um, probably could be a pile I would pick right now, <laughs> but anyway. Um, yeah, so, but yeah, interesting, beautiful message. And I love seeing like the result of like keeping at this. So that is where I'm going to leave you guys right now. If this resonates, I always appreciate support, likes, shares, subscribes. Um, always grateful for kind and thoughtful comments as well. And I wish you well with like getting, you know, further past scratching the surface and really being able to grasp hold of this deeper sense, the root of kindness in your ancestral powers. All right, see you guys. Hello, Pile 3. Welcome to your Friday Insight reading, which is a mystery message. And this week's mystery message is from your DNA. And the first two readings were super fascinating. I kind of expected these to be, because um, I'm like, I don't know how DNA speaks to, <laughs> through the cards. Um, yeah, they've been really, really mysterious and interesting. And to kick off your reading, definitely something that holds a, a lot of weight in these readings is this intuitive hit that came right as I finished the intros or the intro to the reading, I got this sort of like immediate sort of knowing about very broad spectrum category of like how your DNA was connecting to each of the piles or how DNA in general is connecting to each of the piles. And for you guys, it's sort of like the message your DNA is bringing in terms of like starting to scratch the surface of some kind of potential it holds. This one was, was interesting because it was kind of saying like there, yes, there is some kind of potential that you're starting to scratch the surface of in it, but as a, potential that um, that needs assistance that it's not like it can manifest or portray itself in your life on its own so like I'm trying to think of a a metaphor or some sort of example of what I'm trying to say here. So think about being in a swimming pool or the ocean, some big body of water, and you're swimming from one point to the next, and it takes a certain amount of time. But if you were to have flippers on, it would like cut the time in half. And this is what this is talking about is like there's something you're scratching the surface of that with certain tools that are available in modern world can really unfold like a powerful potential, like amplify something it's able to do for you through pairing with something available in the modern world. I don't know like that. <laughs> we'll see. Let's get into the cards because I don't know what we're talking about yet other than like this is something that is, you know, eager to come online, pushing for you to see it, but that can really only reach its potential with something else helping it 
that you have access to. Um, okay, so we are going to get sort of a geometric resonance card to see the main theme of what this is talking about more specifically. So integrity. Okay. The energy of integrity supports our choice to be consistently truthful and honest while being guided by high moral standards. Interesting. Um, so something you're scratching the surface of around integrity and your DNA it's possible that you're going through certain things at the moment that are teaching you lessons about what it means to be more forthright in life, more honest in life. I'm trying to connect to what that external aid would be. I don't know what that is yet. Um, being guided by high moral standards and using that to be more honest. I feel like the word forthright is coming up, using high moral standards to be forthright. Um, so what is an external aid that would amplify that? Because my sense is like you probably have a lot of integrity, but there's something that your DNA is saying that could like amplify it or like give it some turbo, right? So I don't know what, what that is. It could be that you need to surround yourself with people of integrity, people that have high moral standards, sometimes when we're in the right environment. That's actually a big thing. Environment and DNA, like our epigenetics, there's a pretty strong relationship um, to how epigenetics, the way access to aspects of our DNA um, tighten and loosen or like become more available or less available based on like environment. That's not the only thing that affects that, but environment really impacts you know, has the potential to impact like shutting off or turning on parts of our DNA. I feel like that's what this is about. It's like saying, um, like I think your, your DNA is saying like you really do understand integrity, but it's time for you to level up your environment of integrity to amplify this. Like there might be some challenges right now or environments you're putting yourself in. This almost feels like a warning to me. Like there might be some environments you're in or about to put yourself in that would sort of um, be triggering this or starting to even turn it off in you a little. And this is saying like, no, go the opposite direction. Whatever in your environment is really disconnecting you from like high moral standards and forthrightness. So it's like time to um, make ch some changes in your environment because this is actually like a really powerful tool that your DNA has already had on in your life. Like you know this you know integrity is what I feel like, but it's like there's something challenging it right now in your environment. And it's like, what? so what shift do you need to make? Not only to remove that challenge to integrity, but to put yourself in an environment that actually turbo activates your integrity, that puts you around others who have high moral standards and a lot of forthrightness. Yes, 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 I could definitely um, yeah, I don't usually put myself in readings, but almost all of these I've been like, hmm, this reading could work for me, but I'm not gonna put myself in it. 
Um, but I get this. I very much so get this right now. Okay, let's see. Let's get an animal card to add to this. See what else wants to come out. Gazelle. Yeah, this adds to my sense that like you really do know what integrity is and you have a very graceful, like I feel your DNA saying like you have a very graceful, artful sense of integrity, but there's um, an anxiety in your environment, something that's making you hypervigilant, that's making you anxious and making you very guarded. Um, and I think it's wearing out your nervous system. I think it's wearing in general. And that's why your DNA is saying like, I'm tired of tightening and loosening and tightening and loosening around things that affect integrity or the way integrity is affecting me as DNA. Um, and it's, I almost feel it shouting like, you know me, you know, like you have such a beautiful relationship with me like why are you putting us in an environment where this really really beautiful elegant artful quality you possess has to be anxious you don't have to be like i think there's something here saying like you don't have to be in an environment that makes this quality anxious. And I don't really know how integrity and DNA interact like that, but I don't, for whatever reason, your DNA is speaking about it. So obviously there's an interaction. Um, It might be more about, it might be more talking about your nervous system rather than the quality. Like you possess the quality, but your nervous system is, um, like that quality in you is like being worn down right now and it's affecting your nervous system, which is affecting your DNA, right? I feel like maybe that like, yeah, that's like the order of it. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I'm not a scientist. Maybe there is some sort of way that integrity has to do with DNA. I don't know. Um, but I do feel that, that like it, there's something about your nervous system that's being affected because of issues of integrity in life in your environment that's impacting your DNA. I do feel that for sure. Okay, let's get a tarot card to end. But ultimately, because this is speaking about, you know, some kind of aid, external factor, and your DNA like the important message here is that like environment matters right now okay tarot card we have chariot pull it together guys <laughs> that's what it's saying pull it together you know from the inside out what's feeling right right now in your environment and it's like making that like there might be decisions you have to make but when you make that decision about environment as relates to integrity around you or how your environment affects your own integrity, whatever it is to you. Like when you can make decisions about your integrity from your soul, from the inside, things will pull together in your life. You'll feel this gazelle float free in its elegant little um, stride or trot, whatever it does. I don't know. It's bounce. You know, I think they kind of hop kind of thing. Um, it's, I'll just call it its stride will be, you'll, you'll feel that integrity, like let loose with in its artistry without this like concern 
for watching for attack, right? So it's like make some decisions from the inside out that take you to an environment you know you should be in. It's like pull it together, <laughs> make the decision, make that move, and everything will, like all these obstructions that have actually happened in your life because of certain issues of integrity around you will dissolve and it will just be like this clear path ahead. Um, like I said, the turbo power kicks in and it's all of a sudden like integrity really opens so much beauty and artfulness in your life all of a sudden. So it's like time to move on from something, pull it together, listen to your soul, move away from things that are shady and, and how integrity feels in your environment and watch life become an open road and more artful and beautiful and yourself feeling more artful and beautiful yeah yeah I hope that makes sense all right if this did resonate I always appreciate support likes shares subscribes are easy ways to do that always grateful for kind and thoughtful comments as well and yeah, I hope to see you in future readings and all the luck with tapping into the beauty of your integrity and using environment to really amplify that artfulness you already possess within. All right, see you guys.